I think we have seen this in many period drama. The per, a very skinny person coughs, 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 and coughs up blood. And then there's always something ominous. I'm Dr. Lo Jia Shen. Uh, I practice in an infectious disease specialist group. We have uh, uh, some clinics in the private hospitals. I run three of the clinics in Farrer Park Hospital, uh, Mount Elizabeth Novena Hospital, and Glen Eagles Hospital. Is tuberculosis began to come back? It depends on what time frame you're looking at. If you're looking at the time frame from 1960 till now, then I would say decidedly no. The TB, Singapore TB eradication program, we have been absolutely merciless about destroying tuberculosis and, and we have been very effective. If I'm not wrong, I think it was something in the order of 200 over new cases per 100,000 population per year in the early days. Still, something like 33 cases, new cases per year per 100,000 population in the recent few years, right? So this is like is a splendid success story. So in this time span, I would say it is not making a comeback. But if you're looking at the time span where HIV comes on, then yes, because uh, generally tuberculosis globally was on the way down until the 1980s where the HIV uh, pandemic came on uh, and, and gripped the world till this very day. And with the HIV pandemic, tuberculosis is one of the top most opportunistic infection that affects HIV patients. So it seems to be riding the wave uh, of HIV uh, uh, pandemic. Uh. So, TB in itself, it is not the, the rise, it's currently is at a very controllable level. What is most concerning are things called MDR and XDR TB. Those are rising in numbers and those are much more difficult to treat than normal tuberculosis. Um, the duration of treatment is longer, the drugs tend to have much uh, worse side effects. Uh but yet they have to be treated because either of the public health risks or of course it's, if it's not treated, it, it will kill them. Generally, tuberculosis is uh, contracted through respiratory uh, means. Uh. So uh, when you live together, when you share expiratory aerosol droplets with a person who is infected, usually we say that tuberculosis is, you require a certain amount of time. So if you brush past somebody with TB, with tuberculosis, one is not going to get infected that way. Yeah, if you, if you just shake hands with somebody got tuberculosis, it's unlikely to be infected. Uh, through early studies, when they look at uh, nurses uh, and healthcare worker catching tuberculosis, it seems like eight hours because that seems to be the length of a nursing shift. Eight hours seems to be a very arbitrary duration of time for which you have to be with a tuberculosis patient. Okay, but it's very arbitrary because there are other modifiers. For example, if you are having a duet with a tuberculosis patient, he's singing in your face, you're singing in his face, then you don't need eight hours. Uh. Practice, you know what I mean? So any activities of high expectoration will, will shorten this transmission time. And it depends also on the load. So tuberculosis is one of the very strange uh, infection because it is not out and out infection that totally overwhelms the immune system. And the person with normal immune system, there is a very strange negotiation process where if the negotiation goes in favor of the immune system, the person goes into very mild form or latent form. But if the negotiation goes in the way of the tuberculosis, the person goes into a more feminine form of tuberculosis. And that also means that the amount of tuberculosis infectious particle expectorated by the patient is also variable. So a person who is what we call smear negative, very low load, is less infectious than a person who is smear positive where the load is much higher. So there are all these variables. And even in the same room, the size of the room is also a variable. The ventilation flow in the room compared indoors, uh, closed like this, or open windows, uh, old colonial style building, and there's a study to show that, with high true flow ventilation also has a difference in spread of TB. So that's, that's a very complicated answer, I'm sorry. Yes, if tuberculosis manifests as an active disease, it will kill the patient. Because it is such a slow infection, it 
kills slowly. If the patient tends to waste away, and uh, one of the if tuberculosis uh, infects the lungs, I think we have seen this in many period drama. The per, a very skinny person coughs, 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 and coughs up blood, and then there's always something ominous. So yeah, so that's one of the 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 ways tuberculosis can really spread in the lungs, and then. It, and cause a massive uh, coughing of blood. Person can exsanguinate like that, uh, and also it can affect other organs. Yeah, if you are left untreated, tuberculosis need not be restricted to the lungs. Tuberculosis has been found in the brain, in the heart, in the bones, in the skin, uh, in so in in the lymph nodes. So it, it is it can affect many places. And of course, if in the above list, if it affects the brain, it is rapidly fatal. Most people have a good immune system that is able to suppress and control tuberculosis. So upon infection, most people go into a state called latent infection. And in latent infection, it actually means the, the tubercle is controlled by the body's defense system, the body immune system. And it stays there. It stays there for a long time, uh, only to emerge when the body immune system takes a dip. When does that happen? That happens when a person is receiving high dose of medication that can worsen the immune system. That can happen in OH. That can happen uh, when a person is uh, is catches another infection like HIV. In fact, the proportion of people with latent tuberculosis far exceeds the proportion of people with active tuberculosis. The very common symptom uh, would actually be prolonged cough. Lah. So this is this is very common. And uh, usually this cough is not only prolonged, it's also associated with some loss of weight. And it's also associated with uh, loss of energy, the person um, gradually loses, loses his appetite. So these are very, sometimes over a long period of time, this could be very mild and chronic insidious symptoms people don't realize. I, for example, don't weigh myself every day, right? So, uh, so people may not realize, but if you realize that maybe your belt is a bit looser, you're needing to use the, the uh, shorter belt or things like that, uh, or your, your, some relative that have not met you for a long time, suddenly realize that, hey, you have, you have uh, significantly thin out, so, or, or there's a cough for a long time, it doesn't get better. Usually, you know yourself. So some people, you know yourself, you know when you have a respiratory tract infection, normal viral infection, you know you're a two-day type or you're the type that calls for a week or 10 days. Something that is far out of your normal deserves concern. Actually, you know we've all been vaccinated with BCG, right? So that prevents childhood tuberculosis, right? So uh, that's very, very important because our infant mortality and morbidity rates have decreased drastically over the years because of some of these vaccinations for which BCG is one of them. But what we are interested in is, I think you are talking about the tuberculosis vaccine, something that can prevent a person from catching TB or reactivating TB. Yes, that one is in early trials and uh, it's been done in Africa, I believe. And uh, the problem with some of these vaccines is, as I alluded to before, if one gets latent tuberculosis, you are at risk of reactivating many, many years later, many, many decades later. Hence, it is not only important to develop a vaccine that prevents you getting infected, it's also important to make a vaccine that prevents uh, your latent infection from reactivating years down the road. So that's a tall order. If I tell you the prevalence of tuberculosis in some of these places is like the entire half of the country, how do you vaccinate a half of the country every few years? So there are some logistic implications and the duration of protection is really a holy grail. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for your regular dose of Asian health information.